Hi, I am Tatiana Saverio, a visiting PhD student from Brazil in the Department of Agronomy at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Are you concerned about herbicide carryover in your fields? If your answer is yes, this video is for you. Soil residual herbicides provide extended periods of weed control. However, they may persist in the soil longer than desired and injure rotational crops. To minimize the potential of herbicide carryover injury, herbicide labels provide rotational crop restriction for certain crops. Also, because of the potential dietary exposure and tolerance issues, plant back intervals called PBIs are EPA-mandated requirement on herbicide labels that dictate the minimum period of time between a herbicide application and the planting of your next crop. If your crop is harvest for human consumption or animal feed, you must comply with the plant back intervals. PBI restrictions do not apply to cover crops planted solely to improve soil quality, reduce erosion, or manage weeds, since there is no risk of dietary exposure. For example, if you are planning to seed cover crops prior to the PBI, when the cover crops not used for food or feed purpose, bioassays are an excellent way to assess herbicide residues in the soil to determine if a crop injury will occur. If you are concerned about potential crop injury even after the PBI, consider a bioassay prior to planting a crop or cover crop. So what's a bioassay? Bioassay is a method where you use susceptible plants to determine if herbicides are present in the soil at concentrations high enough to inhibit germination and affect plant growth. It's a cheap and easy way to avoid crop injury from herbicide carryover. In this video, we use a case study with four cover crops to show their sensitivity to different herbicides. Now, let's take a look at how to conduct a bioassay. First, collect representative soil samples from the field suspecting of have herbicide residue and from areas known to be free of herbicides. The latter will be used as your non-treated check. Herbicide carryover is rarely uniform across a field. Thus, you should collect samples separately from areas where more herbicide residues is expected. For example, in areas with lighter soils and where the spray boom was charged. The number of cores collected will depend on your soil sample dimensions. At least 10 pounds of moisture soil is required for each sample assayed. Conduct the assays within two days after collecting soil. If the soil samples are too wet, let the soil partially dry to a workable condition. If you cannot start the assay immediately, store the soil in a freezer until you are ready to start. Fill one pot using herbicide-free soil, the non-treated check, and another with the concerning soil as it came from the field. Seed the bioassay species in both pots. Place the pots in a greenhouse or on a sunny window and keep them watered. You can bioassay particularly sensitive species, but the best species to use is the one you intend to grow. In our case study, we collect treated soil samples from the field at 0, 30, and several days after herbicide application. The herbicides sprayed were atrazine, s metalloclor and mesotrione. We also collect soil samples from a non-treated area for comparison. Bioindicator species evaluated were annual rye, cereal rye, radish, and red clover. Herbicide injury symptoms should become apparent within two to three weeks after establishing the bioassay. Plants growing herbicide contaminated soil may show stunting, yellowing, bleaching, crinkling, or curling leaves, stem twisting, and root stunting, depend on the herbicide mode of action group and bioindicator species. In our case study, red clover and radish are sensitive to mesotrione and more tolerant to atrazine and s metalloclor Inual rye and cereal rye are sensitive to s metalloclor and more tolerant to atrazine and mesotrione. What to do if the herbicide residues are present? If the bioassay demonstrates herbicide injury to a bioindicator species, you should postpone planting those species, which allows additional herbicide degradation in soil. In the case of cover crops, you should select species that are not showing injury. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.